Hi YouTube, it's AC Dodd, I'm back again and this time we're going to do another episode of uh, machining on the lathe and in this time we're going to do piston redishing. Hopefully you'll find this useful. I have here a set of uh, four pistons which have been sent in to me by uh, Thomas Classic Modern uh, for redishing. Uh, these are the usual 21253 type pistons. Um, as sold by mini spares these particular ones are plus 60 in size uh, i get asked to do a lot of these actually uh, over the year but uh, typically it's for thomas classic modern uh, dorchester mini spanner center ml motorsport uh, neil slark and uh, even brian slarker on occasion as well so um, as i say this is something i do uh, a fair bit of uh, so i've got a good experience of doing that um, and i decided to make a video to show you what i do um in case you guys want to do that or you just want to see uh, how it's done anyway let's get into it so with the pistons unpacked um these particular pistons are just a normal heavy spherical dish uh typically uh nominally 8.4 cc but we're going to measure that and actually see what they come out of the packet like um but uh, the job from uh ross at, at thomas classic modern he's asked me to uh, machine the crowns down by 35 thousandths of an inch and then redish the piston uh, back out to 9.5 cc so uh, uh, why would we be wanting to do this well uh, with a lot of a series engines over the years there's been uh, lots and lots of rebuilds on on these engines and in some cases they were uh, fitted with cheaper pistons uh, which didn't come up to the top of the block so a lot of uh, engine machine shops um, skim the top of the block uh, to get the compression back up to use a cheaper piston uh, which is a bit unfortunate because obviously uh, if you fit a more expensive uh, piston like these ones with the 21253s which are made of slightly better material and um, have got uh, a stronger design because they haven't got the the oil slot that goes halfway around these have got a very small oil slot um uh the crown height on these means the pistons come almost to the top of the block even on the standard block so if you've if you've had a block that's had a big big haircut in the past to get uh, a piston near the top uh, these will will pop out now in this case ross thinks that uh, on his application if i put these in this block now uh, these pistons will be um about 22 thousandths out of the top of the block so he needs some um uh some headroom there so we're going to skim 35 thou off the uh piston which means that he'll have a little bit of room to uh, clean his block up and the piston should come somewhere near flush or just below the surface so uh that's the job okay one of the first things i'm going to do uh is actually verify what uh dish volume we've got in here i don't normally do this because obviously i'm just going to put it on and machine it but i'm going to show you how to do it anyway so uh what better opportunity than, than to check the standard dish so um all i've basically got here is my burette uh, i've filled it with uh paraffin or uh, for our american friends that's uh, uh kerosene uh in the uk it's uh, uh we use blue paraffin which is for heating fuel um that i find works well in the burette pours in nicely and uh you know minimizes bubbles etc etc uh, and works for me so um we'll fill that dish now and see what we get so we'll let that flow in i've already zeroed my burette and we'll fill that right up to the top and we'll see what we get okay you can see that's filled up no bubbles i've moved the bubbles around um Let's see what the reading is. Okay, in this case, that's come out at about 7.95. So uh, as you can see, they don't always meet, match exactly with what the manufacturer says, and that's due to tolerances. But uh, no matter, this is fine for our application. Okay, we're over by the lathe. Now, the first thing we need to understand is uh, we need to hold that piston. And uh, the uh, one of the things you don't do is hold it in a conventional chuck. And the reason for that is the pistons aren't actually straight on the sides or parallel, I should say. Uh, they're actually um, uh, tapered and they're also oval as well. So uh, they're specially shaped so that they uh, 
uh, expand correctly uh, with the heat when they're in the engine. So we need to hold that uh, in a way that's not going to um, change its shape or put undue stress on it when we're machining. So what I'm going to do and the way I do it, and there are other ways to do it, but my chosen method is to use a drawbar. So for those of you who don't know what a drawbar is, well, it's quite a simple uh, device. It's basically a, a length of studding and a um, hand wheel uh, that's threaded at the back, runs through the headstock of the lathe and then comes out the other end. And uh, what we can do is turn the hand wheel on the back and then this pulls this in and out on the thread. Um, and then we can attach things to that uh, depending on what we want to want to hold. Um, and then we can clamp them on, centre them up, and then machine away uh, nice and readily. Uh, it's really useful for um, odd-shaped items like a piston or anything else in particular, brake discs and things like that. So it's one of those things that um, I don't often see other people have on their lathes, and I can't really understand why that is, because I find uh, these uh, drawbar setups is, um, you know, if you're doing car stuff, uh, or odd shaped items, uh, it's it's an absolute must. Okay, so when you're setting this up, your little faceplate um, needs to go in the machine and it needs to be flat. Because obviously if that's moving around, then obviously your piston machining will be off as well. So uh, part of uh, setting this up is to make sure that that is uh, nice, nice and true and flat, which as you can see from my dial gauge there, that's the sort of thing you want to aim for. So now we've got that in the lathe, the next thing you need to do is to uh, put your piston on and center it up. Now this is where, well, at first glance, you think, oh, what's going on here? Uh, but that is actually centered. Um, and the reason why it's like that is because, as I said before, the piston's not actually round. So it's, it's kind of oval shaped, yeah? So uh, across, uh, in line with the gudgeon pins, it will be small. There you go. And then... Uh, on the 90 degree to that, that's where the largest size will be. Okay. So as you can see on both sides, it's almost spot on. Yeah. It's within our one. And then there is the same as there, within our one. And that's perfectly fine for machining. Um, in order to hold this on successfully... Um, before you fit the piston, just make sure you run a file across the base to make sure there's no burrs. So it sits nice and flat on your uh, faceplate. Uh, in order to secure it in, I just use a piece of stainless steel, something like 316 is ideal, um, 20 mil diameter. Uh, this is a bit smaller than that, but 20 mil is recommended um, for the standard piston because uh, the standard piston gudgeon pin size is 13 16 so. 20 mil is ideal uh, and then have a, a thread in the middle of that bar put that in and then you can tighten up the draw bar pause the piston basically pistons pulled onto the um, uh, face plate nice and square it's nice and strong when you tighten it up and it's you're actually holding that in the way the piston's designed to be held uh, or to, to to take force so uh, this this works out rather well for machining so what sort of turning tool do I use? Well, I have uh, I use a modified colloid tool. Um, that's the reference on the side. Um, and it uses these button type inserts, uh, which are nominally eight millimeters. There's the details there. Uh, RCGT insert um, with the AK chip breaker for aluminium HO1 grade. So, it's a non-ferrous tip. Uh, as you can see, uh, I haven't used many of them because they last very, very well. Um, what I had to do was just grind some clearance on the front uh, just so that when I'm going into the corner of the dish, there's a, enough clearance there that the actual tool won't hit the side of the, the radius of the piston when I'm cutting. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the machine up I'm going to touch on, then I'm going to machine off the 35 thou off the crown, and then I'm going to set the machine up to machine the dish, okay? Just 
just the torch so I can see uh, up close when that's going to touch on. Any time now. Back that away. Use the compound to put on uh, our cut, which in this case is 10 bow at a time. Run the machine up to cutting speed. Which in this case I use 1500 RPM. A little bit of WD 40. And away we go. As you can see, the piston material cuts very, very easily. Last cut. Okay, so what we've now done is we machine that piston crown down by 35 thou. So what we're now going to do is we're going to set up to uh, machine the uh, crown on the inside and dish it out more. So next thing I need to do is to uh, find out where the edge of my tool is versus the edge of the piston. And I just use a simple square like so and bring the tool up to it. When it touches that's good enough and that's so i can reference uh the dish uh to the edge so i don't overcut so i zero my machine and i now know where that edge is so i can put that in on the dro set a diameter so first i'm going to go put a hundred thou deep dish in and then I'm going to take the piston off and then go over to the burette and see where we are. I've already calculated using the spreadsheet, um, which I'll uh, talk about a little later. Basically going 20 thou increments. And there's a hundred. About 120. A bit of hand finishing to finish off the uh, pistons. And on the outside. Just breaks the edge. So we're taking the piston over to the burette uh, with that dish in at 120 thou, and uh, we have filled it up, and we'll see what we've got. Looking at the burette, we can see we've got about uh, 8.4, nearly 8.5 cc, so there's a little bit more to go. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to uh, cut the video there, and uh, you'll have to wait to see what we do in part two to find out what's going on. Well, hopefully you enjoyed part one of uh, machining on the lathe, uh, piston redishing this time round. 
Um, I look forward to seeing you again on part two. And as ever, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.